today I'm absolutely shocked. We're just about, I don't know, not even really an hour from where, from the centre of the city and all I can see is absolute desert. It's the most bleak looking place. There's no vegetation here. I haven't seen one tree, one green hedge. People are living here. Well, I'm, I'm fit and we're walking up some pretty steep, uh, precarious steps, muddy steps. And it's just occurred to me that women and children have to come up here day in, day out, carrying barrels of water. I just don't know how these people do it. It's, it's incredible. Oh, well, I was just say, uh, this, is a, this is a great welcome. You can hear the vibrant, wonderful, welcoming singing. And this centre that's just about to start off, it's actually in somebody's home. There are people here who care so much about the children in their community that they literally open their own doors. The Paradise Project exists because of one woman called Marita deciding she had to do something to help local vulnerable children despite her own severe poverty. Her little house on the hill is made up of two rooms and she's given up the best one at the front to allow children in the area to come and play and sing and dance together and be safe. I asked her why she'd chosen to do this, why she was prepared to sacrifice her best room and move all her own things into the one with the dirt floor and canvas roof at the back. It's because I love children and the mothers of the community know I stay at home with my own kids so they can leave me with their children when they have to go to the city to work. I gave them my best room because I didn't want the children to be in a place without a floor. I wanted them to be able to play. I love to see the children playing. Because I didn't want them. We have three sisters. When I was little, my mum left us alone at home, me and my brother and sister, without anyone to take care of us. I remember I wanted to play, to be allowed outside, to go to school to study, but I couldn't because I was locked inside my house. That's why now I open the doors of my house because I know what it was like. This is a dangerous area, but they are safe here. We don't have much, it's not very comfortable, and we have no tables or little chairs or any toys. Sometimes, if the kids want to sleep, I have to put them on my own bed. So we are so glad you've come, and we are so thankful for your help. Well, Lima is certainly a place of contrast and the unexpected. When I first came here, I had I suppose I had a preconceived idea of what I was, what I thought I was going to see and within moments that preconceived idea was basically obliterated. I was confronted with modern plazas, beautiful looking people, decent streets, gorgeous gardens. I mean it just looked like any other modern functioning city. This place really is uh, full of the unexpected. Um, there are street children. It is a, a, a really serious problem that needs to be addressed. There is a huge need, but it's hard to actually see with the naked eye. There's a phrase that somebody once used, and they said it's all hidden in plain sight. And basically what that person was saying is that it's right under your nose, but because it's so obvious, you don't see it. And I think that is the case here with these children. It's not that difficult with the right sort of support to, to take a child off the street. But what's much more useful, what's much more long-lasting, what's much more beneficial is for a child not to be on the street in the first place. So if we're really looking for a transformation of a young person's life so that they can live that life that says, you know, that, that God talks about, the life that um, is full of purpose and greatness, then we really do need to think about prevention. And one of the best ways of preventing a child being exposed to the horrors of the street is to get to the parents, to get to the families and to repair families and that's what's being done here.